And what's so funny is that in America, we're talking about the pursuit of happiness. But if Jesus is right, the pursuit of happiness isn't found in the abundance of the possessions. It's found in the giving away. You know, we could just say, hey, it's, it's going to be a bright future. This next year is probably going to be your best year. Come on, let's just go. You know, it might get worse. So where are we putting our faith? Where are we anchored? Bruce Lawn. On this video, my buddy Sean Cano from Think Media drops some absolute truth bombs when it comes to planning and forecasting the next year, the need to detach from our things, maintain a generosity and an open hand mentality. You are going to be so blessed by this video, so make sure you watch till the very end. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. We have some amazing free resources for you in the description of this video and in the pinned comment, including a brand new free course I just put together with well, my Christian therapist named Dr. Rudy over at mastermyhabits.com, all about freedom, forming habits, going into the new year, the process of sanctification. It is incredible. And we have a free how to study the Bible course to get you more clarity, context, consistency in your devotional time, as well as a free niche training if you're considering getting into the YouTube creator space. Links in the description below. Yesterday was my 37th birthday and I had the best birthday ever because I donated my birthday to an organization that gives 100% of their proceeds towards bringing clean water, clean drinking water in parts of the world that currently don't have it. It's called Charity Water, and we were able to raise over $11,000 to bring a whole community or school clean drinking water. And so this is my buddy Sean Cannell calling in. If you want to see the full episode, it's on Patreon. A bunch of my, brother and my brothers and sisters called in, offered words of encouragement. But this is specifically Sean Cannell giving us just amazing words of encouragement going into the new year so check this out mr i don't know how many million subscribers he has think media zone Happy sean cattle ladies and gentlemen the ogs Dude, are up, calling man. in this is crazy thank you for calling in man so, so glad i got to make it pumped to be here and you know i've just got to say with my own board over here that uh you gotta just press record Come on, <laughs> let's go. Bro, you have been generous to me with your time. You've been generous to me with your network and your relationships. Uh, Sean Cano, man, really is the real deal. This brother really loves Jesus, and I'm so grateful that you're here, man, I'm, and I'm so grateful for your friendship. Words of encouragement, man. People people had a rough couple years. What are some words of encouragement you have for brothers and sisters that, that maybe, you know, it's just a weird time to be alive. Uh, what, what, what are some words of encouragement and wisdom you have for us? This is just what's, what God's been doing in me. It might, it might get a little heavy, but I think as Christ followers, I, I think we can just kind of forget that that we were called to carry a cross. You know, I was reading Hebrews and it, and it said, endure hardship as discipline. Mm. And I think that we can have messed up theology sometimes where if we think God's mad or angry at us because of the work of Jesus, that's not the case. Mm. But, and, and that what the hardship we're going through, it's not like it was sent by God. But nevertheless, Hebrews says, endure any hardship as discipline. And I've just been really spending a lot of time reading, studying, praying in my word, especially over the holidays, which has been such a blessing. But I just think that, you know, w there can be even a, a false gospel or at least a skewed gospel that that causes us to just kind of think that if if there's hardship or, or persecution or pandemics or all these different things that uh, anyway, it, it can get us really off track and we can get mm -hmm. really discouraged when in the meantime, mm -hmm. we, you study the life of the apostle Paul, I'm, I'm crushing through new Testament and he, man, he's getting, he, he's, he considers persecution as uh, rejoice. Therefore brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you face trials of many kinds, you know? And so, man, when I think about a couple hired years, I think, you know, we could just say, Hey, it's, it's going to be a bright future. You know, this next year is probably going to be your best year. Come on, let's just go. You know, it might get worse. It might get worse. <laughs> it, it might get worse. And so, yeah. so where are we putting our faith? Where are we anchored? By all means, let's strategize and pivot and work on our mental health and get our finances up and get our business going and by all that and, and, and protect our family and not create some kind of a doom and gloom mentality. That's I don't think that's what like following Jesus looks like. But man, when we realize that eternity is what matters most, I think that it puts the temporal in perspective. And, the, and Corinthians says these light and momentary troubles 
pale in comparison mm. to the future glory, you know, that awaits us. And so, I mean, that's kind of, I, I don't know if 2022 is going to be yeah. brighter yeah. or better. It might get more complex. I, life is seasonal. I think the practical wisdom is that we've seen as long as the earth remains, uh, there's going to be four seasons, seed time and harvest, summer, spring, winter, fall. So we've been def certainly going through uh, a, a winter in terms of just all kinds of stuff. Right. And if you study history, cycles happen political craziness mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. yep you know pandemics have happened we put it into perspective this has been and and bro i know you've lost friends and and family or known people and like people uh, i have friends that have passed away a pastor at a ch former church i worked at he passed away like he went too soon because of uh you know this pandemic and things like that it's really intense it's really brutal and then on the flip side this isn't the black plague right you know this isn't um, the persecutions that believers of the past have faced. Christians are not being thrown in a coliseum to, to, yep. and being torn apart by animals here, especially in yes. the U.S. Yes. yes. And so I think that can frame and put a lot of things in perspective. But where I'm anchoring, as as I think, is like got, in, in terms of personal and in terms of things get heavy and even running a business gets heavy and stress gets heavy and health mm -hmm. challenges I'm facing gets heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, in God's faithfulness, we are the foreigners and travelers in this life we yeah. are just passing through and so what god really it's what god's doing in us much more than the weaknesses of our flesh literally our physical bodies which will break down i'm all for health and wealth you know like come on yeah. like well, i mean yeah beloved above all things prosper and being i pray that you prosper and be, be in good health We're, yeah. we sh that's that's amazing but yes it's, there's there's so many that would tell us and it honestly i think it has caused a lot of confusion disillusionment, discouragement, anxiety, even mental health problems in believers, the prosperity gospel at its extreme is, is not actually feeding our souls. And we can receive nourishment from the cross of Christ, from the real gospel, we can receive faith. We can have supernatural joy in the midst of the world falling apart around us when we're feeding off the excellencies of Christ and the richness of his word if we really say jesus you are all i need that's where i'm trying to that's what i'm striving for i'm not saying i'm there i'm i'm stressed and worried too maybe like other uh, everybody yeah, else yeah. but that's what i'm pursuing and seeking and i'm pressing yeah. towards that goal in 2022. come on that's so good guys um sean why is it important, despite all the uncertainty, why is it important for us to remain generous and continue giving back despite everything, all the uncertainty you just mentioned, why is generosity so essential to us still? I mean, I was just an ax and Paul said, you know, uh, is, as I continue to preach the gospel and I continue to, you know, live this, this ministry life, I'm also reminded of Jesus's words that it's better to give than receive. And you should always remember the poor, bro. I mean, I've, I've just kind of been in this really good season of Holy spirit conviction. Some people, some people are confused and they say, oh, the Holy spirit doesn't convict of sin or, or like, no, uh, he does. And it's mm -hmm. just something I heard from from someone that's not accurate uh, it, because he's working in us and conforming us in the likeness of Christ. And bro, materialism, man. I have been confronted with how materialistic I am. Wow. Uh, I've been confronted with, uh, we're in America, but not even just trying to water it down. Jesus had been dealing with me like, John the Baptist said, man, like if you got two jackets, give one away. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I got more than two jackets. And mm -hmm. so I've just been, to put those things in perspective and if, and this is not legalism or religion, yeah. I think you can have more than two jackets. Like, you know, maybe what, yeah. that's, you got a snowboard jacket, you got a jean jacket, yeah, you got yeah. your, yeah. you know, you got your dope bless God merch. Like, so thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but, but like, but, but this is just what the Holy spirit is dealing with me. And, yeah. and so anyways, man, like to just think about the opportunity, it is better to give than receive. And there's just so much need out there. I have been challenged to be on a personal spending freeze but not a giving freeze. And it's year end Come right on. now I'm thinking about how, uh, man, okay, do we really need that? And Sonia and my wife, we're going through the same thing. And so I think it's a huge opportunity. I love what you're doing uh, to, to live a generous life. The, the release of joy and peace, as well as just even sensing the Lord's flavor, favor, which is out of, 
out of following an obedience. So again, it's not legalism or whatever, but yeah. but I think we should be following the Holy Spirit. And this the Holy Spirit is dealing with me. So saying all that, thinking about and then I started thinking, I mean, Jesus did say sell your possessions and give to the poor. The you, you study church history, people still had possessions, yeah. but it's just a surrendered position. So that's Amen. that's what I where I'm at. Come and on. I um we're challenging ourselves. And and I'll, and this last kind of thought is was huge. I'll admit I got a little bit disillusioned in the last month or so. And uh, and then I was very much challenged as we're up here in this, the Northwest. We, we go to this church up here called the Pursuit Northwest with Pastor Russell Johnson. And uh, I was disillusioned because our business has been doing very well. And Rusan, you know, like we 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 go way beyond the tithe. We give in our local you know, our a local church, like we give to a couple different local churches tied mm -hmm. to our local yep. church in Vegas. Yep. Um, we were trying to, you know, support, I think, 79 kids through Compassion International. Now we're trying to get to 100 through our business. So we're trying to do a lot of stuff and we're really but we're also doing incredibly well and, and, and we're hiring people and we got to balance our budget or we have a team of almost over 20 now. So we got a lot of stuff kind of going on. But I'll admit, like I was like, man, we like our needs are met and like we're giving. And I kind of had this like temptation to somewhat settle and you just get in that place. And, and just in church this last Sunday, it was like, no, dude, you got to build. You've been, God has given you the ability to produce wealth. Come on. But the specific detail for it was you don't need another jacket right now, <laughs> but, but keep going and producing wealth. Why? Because other people do. Yes. The world's got needs. Yep. And I was getting insular. I was just like, well, mm. we're like, we're, our, we're doing pretty good, you know, right now. So, and, and I got disillusioned until I turned it back and said, oh my gosh, look at the world, the needs of the world. Yep. Look at the needs. And so, and, and look at the needs of the local church too. Yep. When yep. We, organizations we feel very called to support. So all that to say is I would encourage the widow's might, whatever you have, it's significant yep. when you just give even out of lack or whatever it is. On the flip side, you're a business owner watching this. You've had a great year. You're thinking about vision for the next year. Man, keep go, keep scaling your business. Yep. Keep producing more. Keep impacting more. Come Live on. off the overflow of that, but because there's needs like Charity Water doing major work, and we can kind of get disillusioned a little bit because I'm here. No matter who you are, if you're in the U.S. watching this, and we got you know you probably have power, unless your phone is the battery's dying because your power is out as you're watching. But like at some point, you got power, you got running water, you've got food. Paul's like, if 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 our if we have clothes and food and shelter we'll be content with that. And this is, I, I hope I'm not coming across, across preachy. I'm like the most guilty, I think of, 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 you know, materialism or thinking of this kind of how the Lord is dealing with me, but bro, man, life is found in generosity. And what's so funny is that in America, we're talking about the pursuit of happiness, but if Jesus is right, the pursuit of happiness isn't found in the abundance of position, possessions. It's fun. It's found in the giving away and in generosity. So all the things we're all looking for, what we're ultimately looking for is we're looking to reduce anxiety and yeah. boost our joy and find happiness. Yeah. It's found in generosity. Come on. It's found in giving Come and, on. and it's found in extreme trust of following Jesus, because I think we can all agree that, you know, as, uh, as says, in, in, I believe Psalms, you know, uh, in all my days on the earth, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Mm. Like our needs are met. Yes. We might not have the, you know, the Land yeah. Rover, but like my car starts and gets me my Ford Explorer a couple years yeah. old. It gets me from point A to point B. Yep. And so needs are met, man. Generosity. That's so I love what you're doing. And so uh, I think it's a huge opportunity. And I think we'll find what we're looking for. Honestly, on the other side of it, it's the upside down kingdom. It's counterintuitive to like how we would normally think, especially with the American dream and that mm. message. King's Dream Entertainment, Bruce Lawn. Yo, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you found a value, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out the links in the description for a free How to Study the Bible course, a free niche training if you're looking to get into the Christian creator space, and a free Master My Habits course. Check out these other recommended videos in the description, all right? Peace.